It began with a challenge, because 13 months ago, the rugby world united to put on a gala match at Twickenham for Help for Heroes. Lawrence Delalio, Martin Johnson, all sorts of wonderful old lags came out of retirement and played, and they raised 1.4 million for Help for Heroes. The guy who, who ran that came to me and said, couldn't racing and the horse world do something? So we pitched up at Ascot as the biggest uh, place going. We said, couldn't we do some charity day? They managed to get a day, the 10th of July, 2010, where uh, hopefully Channel 4 will be, well, Channel 4 are going to be there, but we need to do something much more than just a charity race day and an auction and all that. And then uh, Simon Brooks Ward, who puts on the Royal Windsor Horse Show and Olympia and many other things, he came up with the idea of having this charity ride. And because it's the 10th of July, 2010 to have 2010 riders. The original idea was actually way back in March uh, and then we met in April, tried to pull different things together and finally we are able to launch now. We've got a website up which people can go and register on, register interest and make sure it's, you're serious. It's £100 to register an interest. It's £500 minimum to actually, and I hope you'll be up to 1000 and plus, to take part. Uh, the website, uh, the registrations close on the, like the 15th of December and it's not till the end of March that the actual uh, entries will be closed and then the 2010 riders will be picked. But it is a unique day. I mean, <laughs> you know, there'll never be a ride like this again. And it's, we brought together today not just uh, uh, Mark Elliott, who's the Chief of Staff of, uh, of, uh, of Help for Heroes, and of course Charles Barnett, who's the mastermind of, of, of Ascot and uh, Simon Brooks Ward who will be actually running the riding end of things but Guy Disney who is a lieutenant uh, serving with the Light Dragoons who has ridden at Sandown and Cheltenham and many other places and actually was blown up in Helmand in three months ago and is around very much today and we'll be talking to him and Tony Terry the wife of John Terry but a, a very keen dressage rider who will be appearing to Olympia. We've talked to some of them. Very emotional, and I thought, my God, you know, we're here we, we're fine, we've got nothing to worry about. It, it's just been incredible. I think humbling is the word that I use every day. And here we are at Ascot with the launch of Horses for Heroes. Uh, and as you say, two years ago, we sat there waiting for the first 10, 10 pounds to come in to support our incredible armed services. So excited, uh, but humbled, I think. You've had all sorts of different events on two wheels, two uh, feet, uh, canoes, goodness knows what else. But Horses for Heroes, how, how much do you think that's really going to take off with the horse world? I think it'll be huge. I think it's extremely exciting. As you say, we've had uh, guys running marathons with one leg. Uh, we've had the rugby world. We've had football doing their stuff. And now we've got the equine world doing their stuff. And if on July the 10th we can get the whole of the horse world, and that's riding from the disabled to the ponies to the jumps to the great fantastic jockeys here at Ascot, we really could raise an awful lot of money for some incredible young men and women. It was always our ambition uh, that it was money in, money out. I kind of want to be the charity with, with no money because I want it spent. Uh, I want it spent wisely, I want it spent well, but I want it spent now for these young men and women who really need our help now. We built the pool, or it's being built at Headley Court for £8 million. We've helped combat stress with £3.5 million to build a new wing for those with mental problems. We're helping every single day in big ways, and now we're moving on to building uh, recovery centres, which really will help uh, these young men and women who've already given so much. So we need more money, and we need it now. Charles, you've masterminded many things, but this is going to be an unusual one. 2010 horses, but many more people, and a race meeting as well. Yes, well, 2010 horses does pose some logistical challenges. Rough. I think most time we have on a race there's about 150 maximum, so I don't know how we'll manage, but I'm sure it'll be easy to do. People are pretty resilient looking after their own horses. We'll have temporary stables and people will ride their horses off horse boxes as well. And you've got a race meeting in the afternoon. How will the ride link up with the race meeting? Well, we want the ride to be completed by the time of the race meeting, really. So the, those who have participated can come and enjoy the race meeting and so we don't have confusion between horses that are taking part in the ride and those who are racing. 
And how many people do you expect to come sort of connected with the with the horses and other connect? Do you think that'll actually swell the crowd on the day? It will, yes. We're giving each horse participating three free entry tickets on the day. So that alone will increase our crowd quite dramatically. But that's not the point. We want them to have a great day out because they're going to ra raise a lot of money for the charity. And, uh, and it won't be like uh, the charge of the Light Brigade. Simon Brooks Ward, who is the uh, chairman, chief executive and general king of horsepower. Uh, Simon, 2,010 horses, not to mention lots of riders and hangers-on, about to be launched round uh, Ascot and Windsor Great Park. How are they going to be controlled? Well, I think, we, firstly, it's going to be fun, but it's got to be safe. And so what we're going to do is put them into packets, and those packets are going to be made up of, of, of hunts or riding clubs or pony clubs, uh, even from the region. So if you want to go in the Scottish um, uh, packet, or parts of it, then that's possible as well. So we're going to actually try and group them into the groupings that they want to be part of. So that's the first thing. And the second bit is that we're going to set them off at, at intervals where we're going to allow a decent gap so we can get round safely and they can all enjoy it and, and, and pick up their goodie bag at the end of it. And of course, can't become the races as well. But tell me, if people want to get involved here, what do they, people looking in, how do they get involved now? Well, the, registering uh, is the easiest thing on the website of www.horsesforheroes.co.uk and the four is a number. So um, that's the easiest way. Register now, register your interest now, and then we're asking for a £100 non-refundable non deposit uh, by the 15th of December. Um, and then we're hoping that people from there are going to go on and be able to raise a minimum donation of £500 by the end of March. Uh, to really confirm their place because uh, we think it's going to be very popular and it's going to be done on a on a sort of priority listing and people people need to register pretty quickly if they want to get onto it and, and, and tell us the actual uh, mechanics through the day how's windsor great park is that going to be closed down how will you get us all through no the great park is a public park and 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 we have to be part of it really um, but we've got the route um, we've got the Crown Estate who run the Great Park's permission and I think we're going to be able to uh, section off roads uh, and close off roads for people to cross uh, and it should, it's, so it, it's all pretty well f um, uh, firmed up as a route so we're, we're quite confident that's going to work, that part of it.